Big East matchup to lead things off. That is DePaul and St. John's tonight. St. John's off of the tough loss. They were just completely outplayed last evening, or I'm sorry, on Saturday by uh, UConn at home. Big atmosphere in the garden. Well, now they're back with the worst team in the Big East, uh, playing them tonight as a uh, massive favorite uh, here in this one. A 21 and a half point favorite. My goodness for St. John's against DePaul. Total 148 and a half in this one. All right, let's get the discussion going. Uh, Matt, what are you interested in for an official play in this one tonight? Yeah, it's a tough board today. A lot of, uh, you know, I think well priced games, even with some spot leans, some gut leans I had. I thought the market had accounted for that either in the openers or just some early market betting moves. But this one, I think, just stuck out as. Um, what I call a two-second handicap, right? You know, just it jumps out at the page and just a bad team in DePaul, a team in St. John's that is better than I think their recent record indicates. They've lost four or five, um, but, you know, tough schedule there, and they've had some injuries, uh, illnesses in there. They're starting to get fully healthy. I know Patino has bemoaned how his team co- his team's cohesion has come together, went in that whole, you know, tirade about the NIL thing and how it's so hard to build teams in the current era of college basketball. All that nonsense aside, they get DePaul tonight. I mean, there's no better get-right opponent than DePaul basketball. And I'm listening to Matt Brady and the post-game pressers, interim head coach, talk about how he's just trying to get his team to compete. That, to me, just reeks of a team that's basically waved the white flag. They've fully quit. Um, and against a team like St. John's, that can bring waves of pressure at you, especially if Patino decides to, to deploy some pressure tonight, which I think he'd be smart to do so. Um, it could get really ugly really fast. I'm looking at the first half, just looking at my first half, second half power ratings. Um, DePaul has played even worse um, in the first half than they have in the second half. So I think even some of their margins full game are skewed because of some late game garbage. Um, we're going to target first half here at St. John's that comes off angry and disgusted after that UConn performance. Um, again, very simple, nothing complicated, nothing rocket science here. Just going to hit J- or St. John's first half against the Demons. All right, Jeff Nadeau, uh, again, he makes the case. DePaul is awful. Have they waved the white flag here in early February? It certainly looks like it. The question is, how alive, how alert is St. John's um, back here in this one uh, for tonight with such a massive line and everybody expecting that they're going to clobber the 0-11 Blue Demons in the Big East? Thoughts on this one? Yeah, you have their full attention tonight if you're Patino. Um, you know, we have to remember, as Matt kind of talked about, and if you watch that game, you know, St. John just kind of pissed it away, if you will. Uh, it, pardon my French, but they did. I mean, they were up one with, like, what, 10 minutes to go and just got run out in the, the final 10 minutes. But, yeah, I mean, I don't think we can quantify how bad DePaul is. I mean, we saw where they were – you know, markedly better when they got rid of Tony Stubblefield, where they weren't losing by 25, they were losing by like 18. Uh, but then, I mean, that Seton Hall game was, that might have been, you, you have to ask yourself what the more pathetic performance was, DePaul or Miami? Obviously, you'd say Miami, but I mean, DePaul, I mean, that game was rough against Seton Hall. They followed up getting destroyed by Xavier. They're one of the worst teams in the first half defensively in the country. Uh, they allow almost 40 points a game in the first half. I think this is a nice play for Matt. I actually have kind of a similar thought on another game we're going to get to. Um, you got to be able to shoot the basketball against that zone that Patino is going to run out there. And uh, DePaul has been under 30% commerce from three. You can also kind of lay up line that defense, as I talked about. So, yeah, I, I like the play here. Should be a good one. Maybe like a 45 27 lead at the half. I like this one. All right, again, it is a large line uh, here tonight, but Matt Cox says, hey, I'm not going to mess with the full game, uh, but he is going to mess with the first half. St. John's here. He'll lay the number in the first half. And this is interesting, guys. I didn't really look into this. This is not at the Carnesecca. This is uh, Hall on campus in Queens. And, Maddie, I see you uh, kind of nodding along here that it is in a different arena in Elmhort, New York, the UBS arena. So it's kind of like a home away from home for St. John's. Uh, as well here, part of Rick Patino trying, I guess, to help uh, gather as many fans in and around New York right. City as he can yeah. for this team, right? All, all the more reason, I think, to juice up the score, rack up points. I actually almost took the over in this one. Um, but, yeah, I, I think you could also argue that the change in venue hurt scoring. Maybe it's a different backdrop. People, players not as familiar with it. But I think right. the fact that Patino has been so adamant about trying to play more at the Garden, play other venues, really draw in – the regional New York area fan base, I think that kind of points to he really wants to put points on the board, wants to get fans engaged. Again, another reason why I think they put the foot on the gas and stopped DePaul here early. 
And you see that comment down below. When was the last time you had St. John's laying 20 plus for a full game against anybody in the Big East? Matty, Matty Cox is only concerned with the first half line here in game number one.